All right, well, thank you for being here. I'm uh, Melissa Evelyn Zayas. I am a faculty member in the physics and astronomy uh, program at Carleton, and I'm also a director of our learning and teaching center. And I'm Jenna Russell, I'm the director of academic technology at Carleton. Um, and so we're going to talk to you today about a experimental program that we ran for the first time in the summer of 2016, and we'll be repeating the experiment again in the summer of 2017, which um, essentially is uh, taking a concept that is used by many colleges, which is an on-campus bridge program, um, and moving it into the online realm, um, and engaging in an online summer course and then a face-to-face -face course in the, in the fall. Um, so let me give you a little bit of context, both about uh, uh, Carleton and then about the impetus for designing this program, the Carleton Undergraduate Bridge Experience, or CUBE. So Carleton is a residential liberal arts college with 2,000 students. Um, there are three quantitative reasoning encounter courses that are required for graduation. So every student is going to have to encounter quantitative reasoning in at least three of their courses in order to be able to graduate. Um, the other, um, I guess the other thing that I should just mention is um, one of the things is we do not have a traditional on-campus bridge program, um, and we also have really no online courses. So this was something that was really a very different, different venture for Carlton. Um, the impetus for, for exploring the CUBE program was our students arrive um, at college with a very uneven preparation in terms of their quantitative skills. Um, so they often, you know, have been very strong in whatever high school they are coming from, but the quality of those high school programs varies immensely. Um, and uh, the way we were handling this was individual faculty member were left to try to address the very backgrounds in each of the individual courses that they were teaching. Um, and the issue though really is a, is a much broader cross-campus issue because of the fact that these quantitative reasoning courses are really distributed in many different uh, departments across campus. Um, so initially, our initial attempt um, to do this was to make use of um, this software from McGraw-Hill, Alex, is a commercially available software program. Um, they have a whole suite of different uh, adaptive learning softwares for quantitative skills. They, we use the Prep for Calculus software, which is designed to review topics, uh, a whole range of topics seen up through pre-calculus. Um, and the motivation being that these are, are um, skills that students should have seen. We don't offer any sort of review of those. The earliest math course that students can come in and take it at Carlton's Calculus. Um, and so we offered incoming students the opportunity to use the software. It provides adaptive quizzing to assess student understandings of a variety of different topics. There's 281 topics in 10 main areas. And then provided targeted tutorials based on the individual uh, assessment of students. Um, and so, so we offered this to incoming students. Um, first off, not many students took us up on the offer. Um, so, um, and then the second thing is, it, you know, this, the experience working in Alex really doesn't reflect at all what students will experience when they come to Carleton. So it's very much just drilling sort of straight up quantitative skills, not really looking at these skills in context. Um, it's you do it on your own. There's not much sort of engagement with peers, engagement with faculty. And so we thought that although this indeed, and we had some students who would spend as much as 60 hours in Alex reviewing these topics, we felt that this was really not actually a good introduction to Carleton and, and what they would experience. Um, so uh, from this use of Alex, we then evolved, decided to evolve this and saw Alex as being a valuable tool, but we felt it would be better if it was one piece of a more comprehensive approach. And so the goal of CUBE is both to strengthen quantitative skills for students um, and, and strengthen those skills recognizing the range of disciplinary interests that students might have and how these skills might be relevant to those interests. And then we also though wanted this to be an opportunity for students to connect with the Carleton community before they arrived on campus. Um, the experimental format was new, so there's a six week summer entirely online course that is credit bearing. Um, as I said, Carleton had no online courses and did not allow students to earn credit during the summer, so this was different in two big ways. Um, and then it's followed up with a fall term face-to-face -face course 
um, once the students get to campus. And so the challenge for us was how do we create a high touch online program in the summer that captures the key elements of what happens in our residential, you know, very much small sort of close interacting community of learners that we have on campus. Um, so, um, so we really designed this um, as a set of activities that were designed to address the quantitative skills aspect, and then a separate set of activities that were designed to address this idea of creating a connection with the Carleton community. Um, and then the fall course um, still uh, is aiming for those same two objectives, um, but it's the format instead of being online is going to be in, in person. So the, the summer objectives uh, to strengthen quantitative skills, we still have students work with the Alex software. We thought that was useful, but in this case, it now only becomes one piece of the, of the a range of tools. Um, every week, we um, choose a problem of the week, which basically chooses a particular quantitative skill, um, looks at it in depth and how it's used in a particular disciplinary context. There are both videos of Carleton faculty members talking about how the skill is relevant to their discipline, and then there's also um, videos that are just talking about the, the math topic. Um, and then we also had a, a six-week uh, project where students we're exploring data sets, and we're exploring how do you spe how do you tell stories with numbers? How do you work as a group to be able to achieve something? And so they were working in teams of four um, to develop to explore this um, Carleton College Arboretum bird count data, and um, to be able to ultimately present it in a poster session when they got to campus in the fall. The objective, the second objective, connecting with the Carleton community. Um, we didn't want this to be an isolated, you are working on this on your own at home, right? We wanted, because at Carleton, very much um, collaboration is the key to uh, how things get done in class, outside of class. It's, it's very much a community endeavor. Um, and so there were weekly Google Hangouts um, where these teams of students met with a current student who was the coach and would help them with the problem of the week and also help them on the project exploring the Arboretum bird count data. In addition, every week we had a Google Hangout um, that included a panel of alums talking about how they used quantitative skills in their careers. Um, and then students responded, we had a, a blog for the program and students responded three times a week to the blog. And that was really designed to, in some ways, mirror the sort of pre and post class time, you know, informal conversation and chit chat, which is how you get to sort of know your classmates, know your instructor. And so this blog was our, our attempt to sort of create some sense of community. Um, the fall course then was actually resulted where they did their poster presentation of the work that they had developed over the summer of the bird count data. Um, there were some additional career exploration activities that built on the Google Hangouts that they had done with alums. And then there were weekly class meetings to address some additional quantitative topics that we didn't get to in the problems of the week. Um, this is what the summer online portion looked like. So um, one of the things is it was six weeks long um, and every week we had sort of a theme. And it was very important to us to have a very clear structure to this. One of the things the research shows is that if you don't have um, structure for online courses, then it can prove to be a big cognitive load for students that can Im impact their performance in these online environments. Um, so everything was very structured. Um, that being said, it had to be flexible enough because we had students who were working you know, 40 hours a week at a job or had family responsibilities. Um, and so, you know, there were there were the weekly team meetings that were synchronous, and there were the alumni session, alumni panels, which were synchronous. But everything else had to be able to be done in a sort of asynchronous manner. Um, okay, so just talking a little bit about the logistics of Cube. Um, the students were targeted um, by the admissions office as people who would benefit most from a review of their quantitative skills. Um, and uh, so we sent out invitations to something like 150 of the incoming students. We had about 30 some odd who applied. And then we had 18 students who we had participated in this program for our first, first time around. Um, one of the things that was very important to us is um, 
if this was going to be truly a bridge program, we wanted to introduce students to the tools that they would see on campus. So we don't, because we don't have a heavy online teaching presence, right? Um, you know, we didn't want to have to get specialized tools that then they would never see again. And so we used Moodle as our learning management system. We hosted this whole thing in Moodle. Um, we used, you know, Google Hangouts as a way to connect with people. UGES, our campus lecture capture, that's what we use. Um, and then we use Microsoft Excel and PowerPoint. Um, so, you know, this is just what, what it looks like. So, so we had to sort of push, I would say, Moodle to its extremes. It's, it's not sort of often intended for heavy online learning classes. But the students did comment later on that they really appreciated. They went into their first class at Carleton, and their you know, faculty member said, I've posted this on Moodle, and they knew what that meant and how to access this. And so that was, was valuable. Um, just to give you some sense of what the problem of the week looked like, so there was, as I mentioned, this intro video. Oops, there was this intro video. Um, that was uh, what Carlton created. The content videos we've mostly curated from elsewhere. Being a small school, we don't have the ability to make a huge array of sort of rich resources. So it was curating uh, from elsewhere. Yale actually has also an online bridge program. And they've been very helpful at being able to share stuff with us. And so they shared their videos. We edited them. Then there's this applied practice problem where we have them respond to some preliminary questions. They have team meetings to discuss the problem. And then they turn in, ultimately, a more extensive individual written solution and look at feedback on it. Um, I, as the instructor, then created a lecture capture that sort of responded to what students had done in the problem of the week. And then at the end of the week, there's a knowledge check uh, that's a multiple choice question with a confidence report by the, by the students. Um, and so, you know, in order to prepare students for their weekly team hangout, we asked them to do some sort of preliminary questions that were sort of preparing them for um, their discussions with their, their meeting with their team and their coaches. And so these are standard, you know, multiple choice or fill in the blank types of questions so that the coach could get a quick read on how the team was doing before they met uh, via Google Hangout. Um, one of the things we were also very uh, interested in doing is in preparing students to come to Carleton, we want students to uh, understand that they should think carefully about help-seeking behavior, um, and they should sort of be monitoring their learning and, and thinking about, you know, how well they understand things and not be afraid to seek help if they don't understand things. And so when students um, turned in their solutions to the problem of the week, they also had to turn in these how feedback questions that uh, reflected you know, how confident they were, what were they still uncertain about, and I would use that then to tailor the lecture capture. Um, and then also um, expecting that they probably did run into difficulties and asking for them when they ran into difficulties, how did they seek help? Once again, trying to encourage a, a sense of seeking help and reaching out to the, to the community. Um, I don't know what happened. Oh, okay, so here is um, the, the, at the end of the week then, we had a knowledge check. And what was really important to us with this knowledge check is at the end, we also asked for certainty. So we were not just looking for, you know, did students get the answer right or wrong, but how confident were they after having worked with this? Um, once again, trying to sort of monitor the metacognition, and then I could respond to students if they got the question right and were not and said they weren't sure, right? I could check in with them and, and get a better sense of what was going on. Um, similarly, if people got the wrong answer but were very confident, we could also once again check in. We're trying to promote metacognition and reflection on how you engage with more learning because that's more of what we will expect students to do, you know, during uh, during the regular course. Um, I think probably one of the biggest successes of transitioning from something online to in person was this. Uh, small group poster activities. So there were weekly activities to look at the Arboretum for account data um, that were chunked up in very small chunks. Um, and then it ultimately um, culminated in the second week of the, of the school year. These were incoming first year students who presented a poster session on the work that they had done. The president, the dean, the director of the Arboretum all came and talked to them. And so it really established them as members of our intellectual community even though much of this work had been done you know, prior to them arriving on, on campus. Um, and so once again, this is part of our effort to 
you know, not just we're just not just drilling skills on how do you do graphs, how do you you know um, work with Excel, how do you deal with data sets, but we're also trying to make people recognize that they're they're engaging in part of an intellectual community, and this is that first step into that intellectual community. Um, the weekly cube was um, sort of how we tried to get to know students. We put all sorts of fun kind of posts up, so we asked students about. Um, you know, write a haiku. Um, in this case, we said if you had to pick a range of the electromagnetic spectrum, which would it be? It was at a point when we were talking about waves, and so we were talking about, um, you know, and, and so you kind of got to know students, right? And, and um, you know, you, you could get to see the students who were humorous, right? So here, you know, someone's electromagnetic identity, I'd be infrared because I emit positive, you know, I like to emit a positive warm environment. But then they also added, why is NASA taking infrared pictures of dogs, right? And so there, you got to know sort of, an, and there were certain students who like, you know, there was a student who was always the joker, the student who, you know, had a theme about music that ran through every one of their posts because they loved music, right? And so I really actually got to, uh, in a sense, to know the personalities of the students. Um, you know, sometimes there was a thing about like, you know, what are, you know, what's the earworm in your ear this week in terms of what music you're listening to? And so we did that, you know, for one of the posts and there were like four of the students who was the same song, right? And so they sort of got to connect with each other um, in, in this online realm. So this, this actually worked pretty well. Um, rarely were the cube posts related to actually cube. They were just sort of, you know, generally getting to know you kinds of things. But at the end, we did ask them, you know, what is your hashtag for your cube experience? Um, and one of the things is I always responded to these posts as well as having the students. Janet did as well so that students could get to know us. Um, you know, and, and then it was also kind of fun at the end, you know, this is what the students' hashtags were. And so you get a snapshot of how they felt about things. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, you can see the students who hadn't done their, you, they were supposed to be doing about five hours, working with Alex five hours a week. This happened in the last week. You can see the students who had been doing five hours a week and the students who hadn't and were trying to catch up in the last week. And so we're working on Alex like crazy. Um, so, so it, it was kind of it's a fun way to, to get a snapshot of what's going on in the class at any any given time. Um, you know, our our preliminary assessment shows that students made gains um, in Alex in terms of pre and post test scores uh, based on working with this. Of course, I think to some extent that would be expected because they've been working with the tool for an extended period of time. Um, and, and overall, the students were very positive about the experience and would strongly recommend it to, to other people. Um, the, the bigger questions that we're going to be looking at is at the end of this academic year, we will compare um, CUBE participant GPAs with um, GPAs of students with a similar background who didn't uh, participate in CUBE, see how they compare. Um, we're also going to be doing some focus groups, uh, talking with them about sort of what their experience of the of the experience, what their experience was, and how they think it impacted their first year at Carleton. Um, it may take some time because this is very small numbers before we can sort of make any significant claims about how this is impacting uh, student performance and QRDs. I think for us, um, the lessons learned. Um, and I think this first one is, you know, I had never taught online before at Carleton, as I said, is residential face-to-face -face liberal arts campus. And so I was, uh, I would say, skeptical at how effective we would be at introducing students to the Carleton experience through an online experience. Um, but the students didn't think anything of this, right? So if you look, they, they thought like, oh, this is great. This is why I chose Carlson. And, and so, you know, clearly there were pieces of this, of what they thought Carlton was that we were capturing effectively in terms of how they were engaging during the summer. Um, and, um, you know, they really enjoyed getting to know each other. Um, they thought, they found it valuable to review their math, right? And, and some students easily acknowledged that they had forgotten or had never learned certain topics and appreciated the opportunity to review. Um, I think the other thing for me um, is that teaching online led, led me to reflect diff deeply and differently on how I do my face-to-face -face teaching, and it has certainly changed how I will structure my face-to-face -face courses in the future. Um, you know, so this program, um, was uh, to go from doing no online to doing a program like this took a lot of work uh, by Janet and I and a whole cast of many more who you'll see soon. 
Um, and so one of the things is if you can find ways, there are lots of good online resources. And so finding ways to adapt those online resources for your own situation and in some ways sort of personalizing to them to your context to me is a lot more sense than trying to develop tons of resources on, on your own. Um, and then the other thing that I'll say for, for us is that, um, you know, this broke all the institutional rules about what Carleton does, right? Like we don't give credit for online, we don't give credit for summer, you know, and, and we did all of that here. And, and the way we did it was by framing it as an experiment. And so that they gave us, you know, we went to the education and curriculum committee and they said, okay, you can, you can do this, you know, for this period of time and then we'll reassess. And so um, that allowed us to do something that was sort of fun and different um, that if we had had to, you know, go through the standard approval process, uh, we probably would never get done yet. Um, and so then the other thing that I would say is this really is a, is a team effort in a way that, you know, when I teach my individual courses, I, it's like me, right? And I might consult with Janet or one of the academic technologists about some piece of that course, right? Whereas this, this is the group of people who were involved um, a particular big thanks to Jim Rolf. He has just been so generous in helping us to do this. But then, you know, there were four other faculty members, there were two students, there were a bunch of academic technologists, um, and then about 15 alumni volunteers who, who helped to make.